That looks about right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, basically I'm just gonna say, hey, I'm Danny and I'm with my friend and New York City fine art photographer. I don't, what do you want to be called? Just an artist in New York. Okay, cool, yeah. Cause I know, it's like, I don't like being called a photographer. Cause it's like so limiting. Sexy. <laughs> okay, so, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce you and then I'm gonna ask you, all right, what are we photographing today? You could just kind of say like, whatever it is you're photographing. It doesn't have to be your whole project, just what's today. And then I'm gonna tell him, all right, and that's, so we're gonna follow Danny around, and we're gonna follow Daniel around and observe him. And then uh, I'm just gonna ask you a few qu other questions, just to kind of get you ready, because I'll probably re-ask them later. Yeah. Just to sort of get your mind going. So, all right. This is uh, take one. Hey, I'm Danny with Retro Camera Review, and today I'm here with my friend and New York City artist, Daniel Williams, who does large format photography, at least right now. Uh, so what are we going to be photographing today, Daniel? Walls and constructed environments that, by framing them in the camera, create psychological spaces. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we're just going to be basically voyeuristic and we're just gonna stalk Daniel around and watch him. And uh, we'll ask him a few questions as we're going along. So it'll be really interesting. Um, so Daniel, uh, why do you photograph these objects? And so tell me like just basically, what's like the very basic concept behind what you're photographing? Um, well, I love to find places that you see every day, um, sort of like, offices and lobbies and that sort of thing, but created out of very sort of bland materials. And whenever you take a picture of them a certain way, they create a somewhat psychological situation in the print. I'm, and I've seen like a few of them. And what like I see, I guess, is this, it's sort of this really stark moment. It's, it's almost, they're so geometrical, but God, they're hard to describe. I don't know. They give me something when I look at them. There's something going on. Um, okay. Let's see. What other questions? So, uh, do you do any people? Uh, I've done the backs of people's heads, um, but and I don't know. Usually there's never anyone in my photos. Okay. Is there any reason for not using people, or is it... I mean, you did say your project specifically, but could you go into just a little bit about why it's only objects and not people? Well, I think people photographed a certain way and places photographed a certain way can lend too much definity to the location or the area. I like to take pictures of something that could be anywhere. Ah, okay. Like the culture of the person or something, or like the way they're dressed, maybe is part of what in, it, it places it and t dates it, kind of? Well, yeah, I don't really like any individuality. I mean, um... Yeah, okay. Um, so how does this work, what you're doing right now, differ from the stuff you've done before in the past? Um, well, I'm getting a master's in photography and I'm trying to really get it or whatever my concept down that is. And uh, I mean, I'd like to eventually have a good platform to work off of to become a professional working artist. What kind of, a professional what? Working artist. Okay. And what kind of, uh, do you see yourself just being like a fine art photographer in the future or is there any sort of commercial side to the photography for you? Um, I don't think I'm actually psychologically capable of doing. Um, <laughs> commercial sellable like photography for businesses or whatever because so much of what I take pictures of are businesses but um yeah that's ironic actually not depicted in a way that's very I guess flattering all right let me just see what else um why do you choose images over like sculpture or any other medium what is it about photography uh, well, both of my parents went to art school, and they were very traditional painters and sculptors and that sort of thing. And, uh, I don't know, it just wasn't conceptual enough. It, it creates a very interesting psychological concept whenever it's something that actually exists. And then, you know, the belief that you have to put into the photo that yeah. it actually exists. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the first part just again since we're a little more warmed up. Uh, so you got to grease the engine, you know. All right. So three, two. Hey, I'm Danny with Retro Camera Review. And today I'm with my friend, Daniel Williams. He's a New York City fine artist. I'll do that again. Three, two. Hey, I'm Danny with Retro Camera Review. And today I'm here with my friend and fellow fine artist, Daniel Williams. He, we're in New York City. Uh, so what are we going to be shooting today, Daniel? Um, places that have been constructed. You want to do it um, again? Yeah. <laughs> OK. And don't say city, just say New York. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. I thought about it when I was saying, I was like, God damn it, Danny. OK. Three, two. Hey, I'm Danny with Retro Camera Review. And today I'm here with my friend and New York artist, Daniel Williams. And we're going to go do some photography. So what are we shooting today, Daniel? Walls and places that are constructed. All right. Uh, so we're just going to basically be really voyeuristic and just observe and follow Daniel around and just kind of get a feel for how he works. Uh, all right. That's good. So excited. All right. I'm going to cut. Um, well, I look for very bland environments, uh, very commercial, but um, you know, nothing too specular or um, identifiable. Almost always I go out with a plan, but since the sun is being difficult today, I'm sort of having to improvise. Pull your gear away. I don't know. It's like a small air conditioner, maybe. I've never put it on a scale. Well, digital hasn't caught up yet, but when it does, this is going in the dumpster. <laughs> so it's not because you're like into the equipment. It's just, it's just, it's a, it's the end result. That's all that matters for you. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm working with what feels like a thousand megapixels, um, depending on how you look at that argument. Right. But. Um, you know, digital just hasn't caught up to that. And I make such huge prints, I need that resolution. Oh wait, is this fifth? Oh, no. Well, I have to act a certain way and dress a certain way to get into a lot of these places and um, look like I have something to do. Yeah. And... You know, I usually only have I usually only have a few minutes at the most to make a picture or whatever. But it helps, you know, going there first, that sort of thing. But usually after I click the shutter is when security shows up. Well in order to find the sort of environments that I want to take pictures of, I have to sneak into, you know, sort of corporate buildings or institutions or city buildings, that sort of thing, that have all these details that I'm interested in. And, you know, I have to act a certain way and dress a certain way. But um, usually I can get somewhat far into the building. Thank you. 
I don't know, it took longer than usual. Well, I mean, that's one reason I like to wear baggy short or baggy shirts whenever I'm taking pictures just so I can like flip it over my head. Done. Okay, the timer's running. This is interior, interior, uh, whatever. What did you think about this place? It's really gross, but it's just sort of like designed for gross people, I guess, to come and be <laughs> gross or yeah. something. It's not really like bland enough ah. and there's like cops everywhere. I kind of want to look around. Yeah, walk around. Just tuck it in your back or I can tuck it in for you. I got it. Just, you have to wait here though. Okay. With the stuff and say that it's yours. Yeah. Do I press the red button? Yeah. Well, like, okay, so this is Daniel talking and um, about. Want me to clap? Yeah, do a baby clap. A little bit better. See, that's what really helps uh, sync it up. Uh, thanks. I know how it works. Um, so tell me, so what are we doing right now? Oh, we're taking a break. There's these lovely, um, like, tiny break areas around Midtown that you can sort of sneak into and sit down. I've taken pictures in some of them, um, but this one's very, like, glossy and policed or whatever. So I'm not going to take pictures. How, how many times, so how often do you go out and like do this stuff? Uh, usually every weekend. Um, I mean, less often, I guess during some parts of the year, but um, I try to stay somewhat consistent or whatever. Yeah. Do you ever find that like you're, you're worried you're gonna run out of material or something? Or is, and how does like New York City play into that? Um, well, something that I like about New York, and, or specifically, is that it has so many of these places, like, concentrated with one area, and, you know, I don't really like to take cars or anything, but, um, I mean, I've seen a lot, but I haven't seen everything, I guess. Yeah. And, um, what if, I'm constantly finding new stuff. You lived in a small town when you grew up, so is there any, like, well, you didn't photograph there, did you? Not that much. Yeah. Do you find that like this, the location you're at now, is easier to work in? Uh, Both in what's out there physically for you to photograph and also mentally, like as an artist or you know, what do you think? Con what it? What, okay, let me phrase it like this. Um, what do you think New York City has contributed? to you as an artist in terms of like the physicality of the location and like living here. Not necessarily the school, obviously that's part of it, but okay, if you could kind of elaborate and start by saying like, well, I think New York City or New York, there's this, just start by explaining that you're talking about New York City and then how it, and can maybe do a comparison to where you used to be. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you again. Um, 
So what do you think, so you moved up to New York City and uh, from a smaller town where you also did some photography. How do you think that's like affected you as just a photographer or an artist? Um, well, growing up, we would occasionally take trips to other states or whatever that would have sort of these large elaborate construction environments yeah. like Midwest malls and that sort of right. thing. And um, I really like those and developing, I guess, my professional work. Uh, I wanted to be around a place where that would be easily accessible and sort of an environment that was dynamic enough to lend itself to, the, I guess, the concept of the work. And taking pictures here is very difficult. Um, yeah. But I mean, part of that excitement is why I take the pictures and, um, you know, the tenseness or whatever of the situation. Yeah. Um, it becomes a little bit more performative. Have you met a lot of other artists working here in this city? Uh, yes. Anyone in particular? Um, Anyone like maybe that'd be worth mentioning in terms of you doing this work that you're doing now? Have any of them influenced you? Or shown you something you didn't want to know about? Or I don't know, I can only think of like teachers or whatever and that sounds cheesy. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of friends that are digital and internet and just general fine art artists or whatever that I really like. Um, I don't know, I, I can't help but think of Bonnie Rogers and Philip Olszewski's last show at 319 Shoals, If I Die Young, yeah. which was really neat or whatever because they had elements of YouTube and, you know, children. Okay. And mm. It's been hit. Oh, okay. So this is uh, Daniel and Danny talking about portrait. Mark. So I uh, commissioned Daniel to take my portrait while we were out. And um, we're just waiting on this one chick to, to get up so we can go shoot over there. Uh, I guess we thought it would look cool, or Daniel thought it would look cool, and I was kind of open for whatever. So, yeah. So, how, what, do you like taking pictures of uh, people? Uh, not usually, but if I can make it, like, somehow psychological or whatever, um, you know, I will. I mean, that sounds kind of pretentious. <laughs> Sorry. Well, like, uh... I don't know, do you like photographing strangers or do you like photographing uh, just normal people? Or people, you, do you like photographing strangers or do you like photographing people you know? Um, I like taking pictures of strangers just because there's that element of them not knowing me and, uh, you know, the weirdness that comes across on the photo. Yeah. Are you, like, aware of kind of your own eccentricity, eccentric? sort of personality, or you know what I mean, like you're obviously very different from most people and how you just operate. Yeah. And like I, you can just tell immediately when you see you. Um, and so like, do you think that's part of what you're sort of showing or or reflecting when you take those weird, when you say weird? At the, yeah, um, I think so, yeah. Uh, I mean, taking a picture where you have to interact in any sort of way become sort of like an identity performance or whatever and then um, I mean that shows up in your work definitely. So you have any tricks for like when somebody's acting really self-conscious like I do because I'm just super I'm just, just like such a camera slut yeah. that uh, I'll always do something in front of the camera so do you have any like tricks? Well I guess um, if you tell me then it's not gonna work for me so but that's okay. To, well, I'll generally ask the person to do like small things that don't really seem significant mm -hmm. or whatever, and then that'll make them nervous or like, I don't know. Like what kind of small things are we, do you have an example? Um, like they'll just be standing up straight or whatever, and I'll say like, can you move, make your legs straighter or whatever, and I'll sort of confuse them, and that sort of thing, then they won't really do anything, they'll say, oh, that's good. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's sort of 
Catches them off guard, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this lady is, she's not moving. She's on her lunch break. She is. She probably heard you. <laughs> I guess I said that really loud. Yeah. Lantanas and bloom. <laughs> Plantains. Lantana. Plantana. Santana with an L. San Antonio. So what's your idea for this portrait while we're um, waiting for this woman to move? I really like that the incline of the ground is really um, sort of like subtle yeah. or whatever in opposition to the architecture and the design of the bench and the wall and whatnot. And um, you just sort of like standing up straight or whatever would uh, get, get, get it. Oh shit, okay, let's go. To, Cut. You don't have to cut. Now I gotta stand in the middle. Yeah, it's gross. your shoulder with your chin almost like main like bring your face like that like, like very like parallel kind of with the camera yes like this okay. yeah a little bit farther like that okay now open your eyes really wide okay three two one got it cool oh my arms numb um, I just really like this nondescript construction wall and the light hitting it. I mean, I have to work with light today, unfortunately, so it's sort of interesting. focus. So I know what the settings on my camera are supposed to be, but I'm pissed off a little because this car is in the way. I don't know, I probably won't even use this picture. I mean, that's my initial reaction, but if you let something incubate, I mean, there's a good chance that it will actually turn into something. I mean, that doesn't always happen, but you know. Got it. This isn't nearly as exciting as, I guess, sneaking into places, but since there's two of us, I have to, you know, restrain myself. And I'm not dressed for sneaking into places today. <laughs> no. Well, I never have projects. I just have like a continuous, I guess, interest. <laughs> Usually, like after I do one of these weekend trips or whatever, I do the hard yoga tape to, I guess, sort of correct any damage that I may have done. <laughs> Why are we on Fifth Avenue? I don't know. <laughs> Stupid. I was at the MetLife building. Um, I had seen a wall like in the lobby that I really liked uh, that was sort of secluded and part of it was under construction. And um, I went back to take a picture of it and I set up my camera and everything and I was about to take the picture. And this lady came up, this security guard, and she said, um, you can't 
be drilling holes in the floor right here, sir. I was like, oh, it's a camera. And she's like, there is no photography here. Um, and I just sort of like did these hand motions or whatever, like over to the side, like, oh, what about that? And um, she got out of the way and I hit the shutter. <laughs> and uh, she went to get on her walkie-talkie, but her walkie-talkie was dead. <laughs> But there was this guy asleep in a building, like, by Wall Street. Uh, he was the security guard in, like, this box or whatever. And um, I went in and I was, like, looking to take a picture of something. And I set up my camera and hit the shutter and then he woke up. And uh, he started yelling at me, but he was, like, stuck in his box and I just got really, like, vengeful or whatever and I just looked at him and I said faggot 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 like walking out <laughs> or whatever as he was fiddling with the locks whatever to get out of his box but I mean I got out nothing bad's ever happened to me right. yeah just got hassled <laughs> right oh we're actually getting like close to where the location was the what the location of my photograph was that I got kicked oh. out. Or not really kicked out, but just like yelled at. Yeah, I love it. Um, I've taken a couple of pictures here. I've taken a couple of pictures here at the MetLife building, specifically in like the lobby with the limestone walls. And just over here is where I took the one picture that I ended up printing or whatever that space between those two columns. You can sort of see that gold. Yeah. Wall or whatever. Yeah, and that light, that hanging light was on. Okay. Cool. Well, we should just do a quick outro while we're still rolling. Um. Isn't this sexy? <laughs> yeah. All right, here, let me uh, frame us up. We're friends. Okay, so we can both kind of look at the camera. Okay. All right, so that was um, a day with Daniel photographing. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've learned something or just got to experience something different. Uh, so stay tuned. We're going to have some more interesting camera videos coming up. Thanks. Oh, I should do a plug for you, yeah. Okay. Hey, so, all right, thanks for coming along with our little adventure uh, with Daniel and me today to experience what one photographer does in New York. Um, just as a plug for Daniel, uh, if you want to visit and see more of his work, you can visit his website. It's uh, fiskit.com, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, check him out. He's got some really unique stuff. Uh, and he's my friend, so you got to, you know, Got to keep it within the network. Let me just do that all again. <laughs> okay. All right, so, well, thanks for coming out with me and Daniel today to, on our little adventure and seeing what Daniel does. Um, if you want to see more of his work, you can visit his website at thisket.com. T-H-I-S-K-E-T. Yes. And uh, stay tuned for more retro camera reviews because uh, we have a lot more exciting stuff coming up. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.